in some of my past videos, I've mentioned something called the intestinal microbiome. The intestinal microbiome is, is, is basically the population of various collective organisms, including viruses, fungi, yeast, that reside in the colon, in the large intestine, uh, and provide, there's trillions of them. There's more bacteria in the, uh, in, in the intestinal microbe, uh, or let's say organisms, in the intestinal microbiome than there are cells in the body. Uh, now, the thing about this, they estimate that there's 40 trillion bacteria uh, that are located in the intestinal microbiome. For years, the intestinal microbiome was not thought to do much. Uh, the bacteria that reside in the microbiome were thought to contribute a couple of nutrients, uh, for example, vitamin B12, uh, biotin. There's a couple of others that were thought to be produced by bacteria in the uh, microbiome, and that's that was it. After that, they didn't, think, they didn't think it did much. But in the last, let's say, what, 12, 15 years, the research on the intestinal microbiome has burgeoned. It's tremendous. I mean, uh, I, think that as as, I think there's actual full medical journals devoted to the research uh, related to the intestinal microbiome because, for one thing, 99% uh, of your immune system communicates with the intestinal microbiome. Uh, some people refer to the gut as the second brain. Uh, so it's very important to maintain the health of the intestinal microbiome. Uh, and the best way to do that is to have a diversity, a large diversity of organisms. Because in the intestinal microbiome, some of the organisms can be considered possibly toxic if they got out of balance. And the other, other forms of, let's say, bacteria keep the bad bacteria in check. So you want to have a, div a diversity. Uh, recent studies show that the intestinal microbiome plays a part in the uh, absorption and utilization of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. Very important for bodybuilding purposes. So what's the best way to maintain the health of the intestinal microbiome? Basically, as I said, diversity is most important. You want to have v various species because they all balance out each other. Uh, the, unfortunately, the typical Western diet with, uh, with refined foods that are rich in fat and sugar, they tend to lead to something called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is an imbalance of bacteria in the, uh, in the intestinal microbiome where the so-called bad bacteria tend to start to dominate. When that happens, you get numerous diseases start to pop up. So uh, they found that in, area, in some areas of the world, the gut microbiome diversity uh, is greater than even people in the United States, the so-called modern world. Uh, certain rural regions of Africa and South America have greater diversity. The people there have greater diversity in their intestinal microbiome compared to Americans. Now, how could that be since they're so much poorer? Well, you have to look at the diet. Well, you know, the most important thing to keep your intestinal microbiome healthy, and I've written this in my Applied Metabolics publication, is fiber, dietary fiber. Dietary fiber, I, I've done videos on dietary fiber. It's, uh, a lot of people will downplay the importance of dietary fiber. In fact, uh, people who advocate the so-called carnivore diet which uh, focuses on almost entirely on uh, food proteins like meat, eggs, and fish. And, and uh, they eliminate fruits and vegetables and grains and other forms of fiber. They claim that dietary fiber is completely uh, non-essential. Uh, uh, you don't need it at all, uh, and uh, it's been overplayed. That is complete bullshit. That is a lie. If you believe that, you're going to get in trouble. And as, I, as I've mentioned in previous videos, people who follow a, carni a carnivore diet uh, for, any, for extended times, and I'm talking like more than a year, are eventually going to find themselves with health problems, mainly related to the lack of diversity in the intestinal microbiome. Now, these people point to people like the uh, Intuit people, so, or some people call them Eskimos, where they, you know, they don't eat a lot of uh, fiber, they don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. However, they have evolved to you know, somehow feed their intestinal microbiome 
where they don't have problems, but that doesn't apply to other people. These people have done this for thousands of years. And they, and they do get fiber from some of the uh, animals they eat. There, there is some fiber in, in uh, you know, they'll eat like bones and stuff like that that gives them a certain amount of fiber. Now, the best way to get fiber, dietary fiber, is vegetables, legumes, beans, and fruit. Uh, again, the, the uh, fi this applies fiber, especially there's two kinds of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Insoluble is a type of fiber found in bran. That helps you go to the, that prevents constipation. It's very important. But it's the soluble fiber that, that's found in, vet, in uh, vegetables and fruit and uh, beans that actually feeds. Uh, it's also in oats, like oatmeal. That's what feeds the intestinal microbiome. F uh, uh, examples of high fiber foods include raspberries, artichokes, green peas, broccoli, chickpeas, lentils, beans, whole grains, bananas, and apples. Uh, now, a, uh, there was a study that showed that uh, if you eat a, a good amount of fruits and vegetables, if you include that in your diet, it will prevent the growth of the disease-causing bacteria. That, it, in other words, it, it blunts the growth of disease-causing bacteria in the intestinal microbiome. Uh, apples, artichokes, blueberries, almonds, and pistachios have all been shown to increase a type of beneficial bacteria called bifidobacteria. Bifidobacteria can help prevent intestinal inflammation and enhances gut health. It also uh, helps to prevent what they call leaky, leaky gut syndrome. <coughs> leaky, gut germs, leaky gut syndrome is an entirely other subject, but it has to do with openings that occur in the gut that allow uh, certain byproducts of bacterial metabolism to get into the body. Uh, for example, uh, uh, one of them is called lipo, uh, lipopolysaccharides. Uh, when this stuff gets into the bloodstream, it's extremely inflammatory. And co it causes various uh, systemic infl inflammation related to various diseases. Another way to feed your intestinal microbiome is to consume fermented foods. Fermenta fermentation is a process where sugars are broken down by yeast or bacteria. <coughs> Examples of fermented foods by the way, if it seems like I'm having a little trouble breathing, uh, for some reason today, I have asthma. I've had it since I was 12 years old. Occasionally, for no, or, for no particular reason, the asthma acts up a little bit, even though I take medication. So I have a little bit of trouble breathing. So that's, if you, any of you notice it, that I'm a little bit gasping for breath here, it's because I'm, I'm having a little asthma problems. But anyway, I'm doing, the, uh, I'm doing this video anyway. But anyway, examples of fermented foods are yogurt, kimchi, sauerkraut's a really uh, excellent fermented food if you can handle it. Kefir, uh, which is kind of like a liquid yogurt. Uh, when I was in bodybuilding, I used to drink a lot of kefir when I was trying to bulk up or gain weight. Kefir is high in calories. It's uh, often it's a ferment like a fermented milk product. I remember I used to eat a peach flavor when I drink like a quart of it. It was like loaded with calories. Kombucha. Kombucha is also a very good fermented food. Tempa from, uh, is very good. These foods are all rich in lactobacillus, which is a type of bacteria that also feeds the intestinal microbiome and is found in the intestinal microbiome. Some research shows that people that eat a lot of yogurt have more lactobacilli in their intestines. Uh, and these people also have less anterior bac bacteria, C, which is a type of bacteria associated with inflammation and chronic conditions. That's one of the bad forms of bacteria. If you take uh, probiotic supplements, be aware that they only last about two weeks. In other words, they'll help supplement the bacteria in your microbiome, but after two weeks, if you don't take them consistently, they're gone. They just basically disappear in 14 days. So if you want to get the full benefit of probiotics, which are basically forms of bacteria that supplement the bacteria in your, uh, in your uh, microbiome, you have to take them on a regular basis. Uh, so, um, so uh, what else can I say? P uh, prebiotic foods, uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains contain prebiotics. Example of a prebiotic is inulin, which is found, uh, uh, or uh, fructo oligosaccharides. They're found in, uh, I believe it's celery as a, as a uh, uh, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, celery is a good source of inulin. You also find in some of the probiotic supplements, these uh, pre uh, these prebiotic foods 
uh, like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, they tend to, uh, you know, simulate the growth of beneficial bacteria, such as the bifidobacteria bit, 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 I mentioned earlier. Certain prebiotics have been shown to reduce insulin, tr triglyceride, which is fat in the blood, and even cholesterol levels in people with obesity, and it could also help prevent heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Uh, what else can I say? Whole grains. I know that a lot of bodybuilders and people who are trying to lose body fat uh, avoid whole grains. You probably shouldn't go crazy on whole grains. It's better to focus on vegetables with, with a moderate amount of fruits for your fiber intake. But a certain amount of whole grains, uh, because it is does contain fiber, there's one of them, uh, there's, a, there's a type of uh, non-digestible carbohydrate found in whole grains called beta-glucan, 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 which is very good for stimulating your immune response. It helps prevent diseases. Uh, and these uh, whole grains can grow, uh, you know, promote the growth of several strains of beneficial bacteria, such as bifidobacteria, lactobacilli, and bacteria, bac bacteroida, bacteroides in humans. It's very hard to pronounce some of these uh, bacterial names. Uh, uh, some people can't handle gluten, which is a protein found in certain grains. Uh, gluten insensitivity tends to be overhyped, but some people do have a genuine sensitivity. For those people, you have to be careful, especially if you have celiac disease, which you, where, you, where you can't digest gluten at all. Those people should completely avoid whole grain foods. Needless to say, because of the uh, fruits and vegetables being the best source of dietary fiber, uh, Plant-based diets uh, benefit the uh, uh, gut microbiome. Uh, a couple of years ago, they did a study where they discovered a substance called DMAO, which is uh, produced from the nutrients carnosine and carnitine. Uh, the, the, the initial study showed that this substance stimulated heart disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, by promoting atherosclerosis. Uh, and the, uh, the authors of the study, because meat was a good source of carnosine, suggested that it was the carnosine in meat rather than the saturated fat that was the real cause of, of meat causing or promoting heart disease. But when they tested vegetarians, uh, they, you know, you have to have a certain type of bacteria to produce TMAO. The vegetarians, or the vegans, I should say, did not have the bacteria to produce TMAO. So in that respect, they were protected. Uh, however, there's different ways to handle TMAO, which I've d discussed in my uh, Applied Metabolics publication. I'm going to do an update on it pretty soon because they've come up with new research. TMAO could be very dangerous, but you know there's ways to handle it. It can be handled. Uh, certain, po certain antioxidant nutrients under the collective term of polyphenols, they, they have uh, they, they provide a number of health benefits. Blood pressure, they lower blood pressure, they reduce inflammation, they help control cholesterol levels, and of course they reduce oxidative stress because they're antioxidants. They're found in fruits and vegetables naturally. They're not found in protein food uh, like meats and fish, well, but they are found in a rich abundance in various uh, 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 fruits and vegetables, other good sources of polyphenols. But his, uh, wait, I should add, you, you see a lot of polyphenol supplements, but, but see, the thing is, humans can't digest polyphenols. You need the intestinal bacteria, which convert the polyphenols into active forms that provide health benefits. But the example, so that, that's another reason to maintain the diversity of the intestinal microbiome. But there are some foods that are naturally rich in, rich in polyphenols. These include cocoa and dark chocolate, red wine, Contains resveratrol, which is a polyphenol, grape skins, resveratrol, green tea. Contains EGCG, which is a polyphenol, almonds, onions, blueberries, and broccoli. Uh, the studies have shown that polyphenols from cocoa can increase the am amount of the good bacteria, bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, and reduce the, uh, the amount of, of a bad bacteria called cl clostridia. Uh, the uh, changes in the microbiome associated with polyphenols are, are related to lower levels of triglycerides, which is a cardiovascular risk factor, and C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. Uh, 
So uh, probiotics, as I mentioned earlier, there's probiotic supplements. Uh, unfortunately, a review of seven studies found that pro probiotics had little effect on the gut, gut microbiome of healthy people. But, you know, if you take, for example, antibiotics, which tend to knock out both the good and the bad bacteria, uh, taking pro pro probiotic supplements might help to uh, restore the, uh, to a certain extent, the organisms, in, the good organisms in the intestinal microbiome. One review of 63 studies found mixed evidence of the effectiveness of probiotics in altering, altering the microbiome. But as I said, the, uh, the researchers found that the strongest effects were that the probiotics helped to restore the microbiome to a healthy state after it has been compromised for, by, for example, taking uh, antibiotics. Uh, so, you know, this, this stu the studies, uh, if, you wanna, if you're taking probiotics, they will be more effective if you also include probiotic food, probiotic rich foods in the diet, such as the fermented foods I mentioned earlier, sauerkraut, yogurt, kefir, and so on and so forth. So uh, I think that's about it here. This is just a brief overview of, uh, of natural ways to uh, increase the diversity of the intestinal microbiome. Uh, I've written about it in my Applied Metabolics. I'm, I'm sure I'll write about it again because this, this, is, a, this is a huge area of res medical research. They're always finding new things about the microbiome. Um, uh, so if you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, hormone therapy, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, women's health and fitness, it's all in Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com, 30 to 50 pages every month, no ads, solid information that includes my over 60 years of study and experience. Gee, I should have taken my asthma spray before I did this video. I feel like I'm not getting any air in at all, but you could probably hear me wheezing a little bit. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm okay. Anyway, uh, so that's about it. So again, so, uh, subscribe today. When you subscribe to Applied Metabolics, uh, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I, I provide new uh, or post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and anti-aging research. Uh, there's an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage for current subscribers only. I don't accept uh, unsolicited questions. Current subscribers can ask me questions about anything that comes to mind related to nutrition, exercise, or anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics. Just shoot me an email. If you're a subscriber, I'll answer you. Uh, I, again, I don't have time to answer uh, uh, non-subscribers and I, I, I provide this service of answering questions as a kind of a bonus to uh, subscribing to Applied Metabolics because I appreciate the subscription. So what else can I say? That's about it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Take care. Thank you for listening.